this meeting of the Dunedin City Council's Community and Culture Committee. Um, we have uh, on the agenda uh, a presentation to the public forum that has not eventuated, it's dissip dissipated somewhat uh, in the interests of efficiency. So we'll move to apologies. We have apologies from the Mayor uh, and Councillor Staines and no longer from Councillor Newell for lateness. I'll move that those apologies be sustained. Seconded Councillor Wilson. All those in favour? Those against, that's agreed. Confirmation of the agenda, I'll move that the committee confirm the agenda with the following alteration with regard to Standing Order 2.1, Option C, be adopted in relation to moving and seconding and speaking to amendments. <laughs> Seconded, Councillor Elder. All those in favour? Those against, uh, that's agreed. Declarations of interest uh, on uh, any amendments that people want to make at this point? No. In that case, I'll move that the committee uh, note the elected member's interest register and confirms the proposed management plan for elected member's interest. Seconded, Councillor Lorfiso. All those in favour? Those against? That's agreed. Part A reports. Dr Griffin, welcome. Otago Museum report to contributing local authorities, April 2019. And while I let you catch your breath, might I offer, um, in this public forum, our formal congratulations to you and your staff for your recent successes at the um, Museum Awards, uh, picking up the most innovative education program and most innovative public program and uh, the Arts Access Aotearoa Awards for oh, your you. work. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, and um, I will hand things over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you. It's always a pleasure to come and uh, report on what we've been doing at the museum uh, over the last few months. Um, a couple of things that aren't in this report, but I would like to draw your attention to. Firstly, we did win three awards at the Museum's Aotearoa um, conference this year, and it was great to see the, the Art Gallery 112 at that as well. So Dunedin was really represented. Um, we were out in force. Um, the other thing that's happened subsequent to this report is that the museum's announced that we're hosting um, the James Cameron Challenging the Deep <coughs> exhibition, which will open on the 20th of July. Um, this is a big deal for us. It's the only, we're the only venue in New Zealand to host this exhibition. We're the second exhibition in the world. And uh, it's an ex exhibition about um, James Cameron's um, interest and exploration of the deep ocean. So uh, it contains lots of props from his movies like Titanic and The Deep, uh, sorry, The Abyss. Um, but it's also about exploration. And we've managed to attract significant um, partnership funding from the Otago Community Trust and NIWA, who will be bringing, I understand, their research, deep sea research vessel to Dunedin as part of the celebrations. So uh, we're very excited about that. We think it's going to be great for Dunedin and the exhibition's going to run for uh, just over six months. And uh, we're very excited about the fact that the DCC have come to the party and uh, are helping us um, make it a sort of a citywide event. So uh, I'd like to say th thank you to everybody who's been involved in that. It is a, it is a coup. Um, I won't speak too much detail on this report. It's, it's there, but um, during the period that uh, ended um, I'll summarise in this report, we did close our um, EST exhibition, which had um, well over 50,000 visitors, which is quite exciting. Uh, we opened a new planetarium show called Zealandia in partnership with Natural History New Zealand, and that celebrates this um, amazing discovery of the continent of Zealandia, um, and we feature the wildlife, and that planetarium show has been very successful. Uh, we've also done a hell of a lot of outreach. Um, the museum's outreach programme is mostly funded through MBIE um, funds, and in the period covered by this report, nearly 4,000 uh, school kids got to experience uh, some of our science engagement activities. Um, there's lots going on, and um, in um, finishing, I'd like to report our, uh, record our thanks to the, the council for the uh, increase in funding for the museum next year. Uh, that's uh, really important for us after a period of relatively flat funding, but um, we had a, a, an increase this year, and we do appreciate that, because without the support of the council, we couldn't do any of the work that we do. So, um, more than that, um, other than that, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have on the, on the report itself. Thank you. Questions? Councillor Gary? Thank you, um, Mr Griffin. Congratulations uh, again. And on page 28, um, talking about the visitor experience and science engagement, it talks about the staff having noted more cruise ship passengers visiting the centre this year than previously. Um, can you tell us why? What, what has been the difference in terms of why you've got an increase there? Um, I think there's been a very there's a dramatic increase in signage around the city. I mean, the museum is not... Um, we know the museum is relatively walkable from the octagon, but it's, um, it's easier for people to kind of go from the octagon down to Toy 2, and I think there is better signage now, so we're getting more people that way. But also, I think um, 
there's more um, more of the um, cruise ship passengers are doing their own thing. They're not necessarily going on the organised tours, and I think that's something we're seeing. So people have Googled what's going on in Dunedin, and um, they've, they've decided to come up um, under their own steam rather than getting on a minibus or something. Um, so we're very excited about seeing more, and we'd like to see more and more people through. And we're very hopeful that with the, especially the Cameron <coughs> exhibition, um, we'll have a package that the, some of the cruise ship folks will want to come along and see. Although, as someone pointed out the other day, perhaps seeing something about Titanic if you're on a cruise ship isn't necessarily the most um, <laughs> stimulating thing. But that, that, that aside, um, we think that the city itself has got itself, um, dare I say, a bit better organised with regard to the cruise ship folks. Councillor Newell. Thank you, Chair. Um, congratulations. In, um, it seems to be a regular occurrence you're coming here and we're congratulating you on, on more awards or, or coups that you're doing, so keep kicking goals, mate. Um, just one question regarding the hock and repair of the roof. How substantial is that and is it a sign of things to come? Yep. Um, the, as we indicate, um, the hock and roof does need repair. Um, because it's a heritage building, uh, we're being invited at least to kind of keep the repairs in keeping with its heritage status. And that adds up a significant amount of money, about over a million dollars, I think, is the number that we quote. Um, over the next 10 years, the museum needs to renovate all of our galleries and all of our fabric, and that's gonna be a massive project. We've, we're developing a master plan, and that master plan will put it all into a, a sensible development sequence, but we estimate that's gonna be 30 to $50 million. We know that we've gotta get um, external funding for that, but um, the museum itself, the estate, you know, some of our, old, our oldest building dates from 1877. Um, there's lots of things that need to be upgraded, and I do think it is the start of a period of significant capital investment in the museum. But we're very conscious of the fact that we can't just rely on DCC for that. We've got to go out to get lot, uh, government funding and national funding, uh, because that's a really big project. But we're confident that if we get the master plan right, we will get that funding. Thank you. Councillor Lord. Yeah, um, thanks, Ian. Hey, look, just one of the things, it's just a wee silly thing, but I've just noticed in the new acquisitions, and I assume not all acquisitions you buy, so you no, get them right, for a yeah. variety of services. I see you've got a silver denaro there. Are they a particularly rare thing? Because I've seen uh, them. Hang on, which page is this, sorry? Uh, page 20. Oh, page 20, right. Uh, you're asking the wrong person about whether it's rare or not, because yep. um, I'm an astronomer, not a... An expert Coin historian. Collector. But um, I know for a fact that the, the collections team have got very strict processes because one of the big problems we have in museums is storage. Yeah. So we don't want to just keep getting lots and lots of stuff. So we yeah. do have collections priorities. Um, as to its rareness, I can't actually speak to that, but yeah. I know that it was something that the, the collection team wanted and that's why we acquired it. Yeah, okay, so, so yep. Yeah. I just, I just do know they're quite common, so, yeah. but, but also quite rare and special, but yeah. yeah. Um, the other question I just had, and you were relating to your government funding, but I know, um, Perhaps early last year there was talk about um, the government thinking about Te Papa of the South and recognising that Otago might have been a good place to put some government funding into that. Have you had any more conversations with anyone about that, or is it not directly? We've had um, we we wrote to um, with the support of David Clark actually. We wrote yeah. to Grant Robertson to seek um, a pot of money that the museum could apply for for national funding projects, but we kind of got knocked back. The letter, back, the letter came back and said, well, actually, you know, we're not convinced there's a need for this yet. So I think there's a lot of um, because strategic having, thinking we need to do. Didn't the Prime Minister even say that was an option when she was here at one point? I'm not aware of that. Oh, yeah, I'm, okay, I'm not aware yeah. of that. No, okay, thank you. Councillor Ryder. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a question. Um, you do amazing education um, programs along with um, the art gallery and the Toitu Museum and I was just wondering do you guys get together every now and then and share stories and yeah there's a lot of contact between the different programs and actually all of the all of the programs in Dunedin are complementary um, our LEOTC funding covers um, <coughs> so I think it's social science if I get it right um, Orokanui have got a science one um, I think the art gallery have got an art one and Toitu have got one too and I can't remember if it's social history or not so we all complement each other we're not competing and the teams do work very hard to make sure that they are kind of providing a joined up service across the city for, for all of the schools. Um, but outside of that, as I say, we've developed quite a lot of expertise in the science engagement um, purely because of the funding that we've, we've managed to attract. And that gives us, um, we're now doing national outreach in science mm. engagement. So it's quite, it's quite nice to be working in that space. Thank you. Councillor Gary. 
Dr Griffin, um, I see that the uh, engagement with the Pacifica community was very successful, a special open day. Um, can I ask what prompted that and are you doing other things like that? Other um, well, it was prompted by an approach from the community itself and um, we decided that absolutely we need to be able to serve the whole community um, and we held um, a, a day with leaders from that community and we got some feedback which has been very helpful and we're putting together a plan to try and um, do more in that space. I mean, the key thing that we'd really like to do at the museum, for example, we've got one of the best collections of Pacific material in any museum in the Southern Hemisphere. And yet we don't have a curator Pacifica, um, simply because we don't have enough money for that. So one of the areas, if we could expand our team by a little tiny bit, we would look to appoint a, a curator Pacifica who could really go out and work, not just with the material that we've got in the collection, but with the community. And one of the big successes, I think, in the last four or five years that I've been, I'm not going to take responsibility for, it happened in my time. We appointed a curator Maori, and um, Rachel Wesley especially now is doing fabulous work, um, not just looking after the collection and developing our Tangata Whenua Gallery, but, but the, the work that she does with the community is really red hot. And I think that's the, the key to success in this area, is appoint people with specialism that can work with those communities. Um, but I'm very conscious of the fact that there's a lot more we've got to do, um, but most of the challenge we have there is due to resourcing. Thank you, and that visibility in the community is noted. Thank you. Can I say one more thing? I forgot to mention um, one other thing that happened since we last met was um, the certain MOA footprints that we recovered from um, Kyburn, uh, which was a big deal. Um, I don't know if you know the story of that, but um, we were contacted by a farmer on Facebook and said, look, I found these footprints. One of our staff went up to Kyburn, dived under the stream, saw that they were MOA footprints, and um, the museum uh, put together a team with the University of Otago and we extracted them. Now, um, diverting a river and extracting footprints is incredibly expensive. And as I have pointed out several times to um, you know, when trying to make the argument for national funding, we have just secured national, the nationally and internationally important set of MOA footprints funded by the ratepayers of Dunedin and our local community. So I think that's another example of where we can make a strong case that there is um, evidence that museums like ours should be able to access na national funding pots, even if it's retrospectively, because I'm telling you that that was quite an expensive piece of work that we had to do. And we had to do it because those footprints are absolute tonga that we need to make sure are preserved and conserved for, for future generations. Councillor Neil. Sorry, just further to that, um, when can we see them? And, uh, and also, um, <laughs> um, um, and also, um, are, we, are we having a look around that area for more, or for more and more? Yeah. Um, the answer, we, I'm very, very keen to get the footprints on display. There's a huge amount of interest. Because they are so precious and they are in a, a, a clay material, we've got to dry it out and that will take time. And because nobody's ever really done this before, our conservation team are, are erring on the side of caution, which is what you want from your conservation team, which is they're saying, look, we know you want them on display, but we don't want them to be damaged in any way. Ideally, we'd like to fund a display that you can come into the museum and see them drying out, mm. uh, but that's going to be more expensive. So we're, we're putting together a plan, but my, I'm putting pressure on the team that as soon as it is safe can we have it on display, but I think it's more likely to be months than, than weeks, um, given the complexity of this. But there are sort of six amazing, beautiful footprints sitting in our conservation lab at the moment, and they're just, yeah, it's just the best thing we've had, so it's really exciting. <laughs> Councillor Vanderfus. Is it possible to just get 3D prints made of them? Yep. Um, and perhaps put them in the entrance way of the in, in the spacing that they were so that people could get an idea of yeah. what a MOA actually does. Yeah, and, and that is actually the plan. We, we, we did a whole bunch of science um, on the day. I, I was managed to drop all my meetings to go and see it, but we had a drone from the University um, Geology Department that 3D scanned it from above, so we've actually got a scan that. of the footprints in situ, <clears throat> and the plan is, I think, that when we have them on display, they will be displayed in the original... Um, they'll be, it's like a jigsaw that you put back together, um, but it will be a while before we do that. And we very much would like to have that in the entrance if we can, because it's such a, an iconic um, discovery. I think this is really important stuff. Um, but we're very determined to do this right, uh, because as I say, you know, the, the, the project was driven by a young um, curator called Kane Fleury, who is about, I think he's 27, 28 years old. 
Um, this is the most exciting science project he's probably going to get in his life, and he wants to do it right, and this is going to build his reputation. So he's being driven to make sure that we get as much science out of this um, before we put them on display. And we can age them. I mean, the, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up, but the, the, the footprints are in a strata that's somewhere between 1 million and 12 million years old, and to get the exact date, they're going to use um, pollen inside the clay to be able to, to date it. So all of that work's got to be done. And we want to make sure that we get as much science out of these things as possible before we do put them on display. But absolutely, we want to, we want to have that iconic um, path in the, in the, in the, on display in the museum somewhere. And maybe eventually as part of a MOA gallery, who knows, because that would be great. And you could do three, 3D prints of the original so that they, it doesn't yeah. matter if people walk on them or whatever. That's right. Well, there's even talk about, and again, there might be some ethical stuff around this, but doing 3D, sh 3D prints that you could sell in the shop. <laughs> But we, I don't think we'd do that because I don't think it'd be appropriate. But certainly we can get really good 3D prints out of this and we'll do casts and things. Thank you. I was going to say, surely we've exhausted questions of the report or started questions on the report. Councillor Lord and then Councillor Elder. Uh, my question was just how, how, how narrow can you bring the span between 1 and 12 million years into? At the moment, that's the band because the, we know that that clay formation, and forgive me, I'm not a geologist, but yeah, that clay, yeah, yeah, no, that clay I, formation I understand is, that, but what I mean, when you say you narrow it down and measure the pollen, how, oh, how I, accurate do you think you'll get it then? Within, within a few, probably a few, certainly a few thousand years, if not a few hundred years. So it'll be oh. really, and these are the oldest prints ever discovered, we think. So it's yeah. quite exciting. Very good. Same age as Councillor Vincent. <laughs> Councillor Elder. That's why. That's why. Sorry, Chair, I just have one more MOA question. And that is, um, what, how big is it? Like, how big is the print? Oh, the footprints are about 300 mil. Each footprint is about 300 mil. So it's about 12 inches in old, old money. Um, and oh, they so were, it's bigger than your hand. Yeah. And it's really interesting, because lots of people said, how come they're so close together? But my understanding is, because the MOA thigh bone is quite long, or short, one or two, it could only walk like that. It's like a chicken. So that's why they're all so close together. It's just amazing piece of science. I mean, actually standing there and seeing this thing uncovered was just incredible. That's kind of... No further questions. Would someone like to move the report be noted? Moved Councillor Alder. Seconded Councillor O'Malley. Would you like to speak to your motion? I just want to thank Ian for his um, MOA talk today. <laughs> We're all very keen to see the actual prints, but we can wait. <laughs> Further discussion? Um, I just wanted to mention, and, and I've spared everyone trying to frame it as a question, but um, <laughs> apropos of the discussion around national funding for regionally significant collections or nationally significant collections in the regions, um, there is a, a, a remit going, being brought by the uh, Whanganui District Council in support of nominally the Sargent Gallery, but uh, going to the local government, New Zealand AGM, with the support of four other local authorities asking specifically for um, national support for nationally significant collections that are housed uh, within the regions. Um, so that is something that will be discussed at a, at a national level um, and isn't unhelpful to your ongoing crusade for, uh, quite rightly, for, for um, central government support for the, yeah. the collections that we hold here on behalf of the country. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nothing further. All those in favour? Aye. Those against? That's agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Item six, community and culture non-financial activity report for the quarter ended 31 May 2019. Mr. Dixon, Ms. Gunn. Ms. Pinfold. Royals. Or not. Take it as read. That's right. That's fine. Questions. Any questions? Councillor Gary. Um, thank you. And I just wanted to ask a question uh, about the aspiring leaders. It's um, page 49, uh, item 34, and it was around the three, three young people being selected um, to go to the aspiring leaders forum. Um, and just wanted to know if you could articulate the, um, the growth and the popularity of that particular opportunity, the interest this year. That would be me. Um, 
So the last couple of years we've had a, a small number of young people apply to go to Aspiring Leaders Forum. Uh, and as uh, the council laws may remember, those young people who do attend come back and speak to council each year. This year we had, um, uh, so normally we have about 10. This year we had 25 young people actually apply to go. Um, a bit of a conundrum for both staff and the councillor and the Otago Community Trust representative who had to select down to interview 10 young people uh, and then Originally, it was going to be two young people who went, but three young people have been supported to go. So um, I could say that we did a much better job promoting it. Uh, I don't know if that's entirely true, um, but, but let's go with that. Uh, so um, hopefully we do as good a job next year, and that becomes something that young people really want to uh, take up an opportunity to go to each year. Thank you, and I think it was the promotion and very high calibre of young people involved. Um, thank you. Um, I had another question which was on page 50 and it was item 48, art and creativity and infrastructure. And um, that's great to see the work being done at Tauroni. Um I know I keep asking about this Mr Dixon and I know that the Peninsula Connection project started before that policy came into being, but do we have any thoughts around that uh, for that project? Uh, we certainly um, uh, have a member of the team who's engaging with uh, the project manager uh, for the uh, Peninsula Connection. Uh, we're exploring um, opportunities, uh, and there will, I think there, there is likely to be some relatively light touch interventions that can be uh, um, delivered. They're, they're really at a very um, initial stage of discussion, but uh, that I can tell you that that, that dialogue is in constructive and ongoing, and I, I would expect to see some, some impact in the next few months. Thank you, that's reassuring. Councillor Benson Pope. Um, thank you, Mr Chairman. It's about the same um, paragraph, actually, the reference to art and creativity and infrastructure, but on a different matter. Um, what is your attitude to, um, to the maintenance of murals that happen to exist on City Council property? Do you have a, a view? Are they looked after, or is that the responsibility of the originator? Well, the, there is a trust that oversees the um, origination of those uh, murals, and um, I think your question provokes us to consider that. I think we'd ha that hasn't been um, entirely worked out, and so I can certainly undertake to, to um, take away that, that question and to respond to you. Okay, uh, well, if I may elaborate, I mean, I'm, I'm raising it because it, 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 the matter surfaced at a Keep and Eden Beautiful meeting that a number of us are represented on this week. Uh, and clearly, the, uh, a, a mixed bag of sources for murals mm. in public, um, but a lot of them nonetheless are on our property one way or another. And it would seem to me that that conversation needs to be had about where the line is drawn about whose responsibility they are. So that is going to happen, you're telling me, that conversation. Uh, I, I think that there's a useful conversation to be had with the property team, and I will undertake to have that in short order. Thank you very much. Can I just be clear, Councillor, that the, the scope of your question is buildings that are owned by the city as opposed to any building in the city that happens to have a mural on it? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, Councillor North Whistle. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you um, to the team for your ongoing mahi. And I just wanted to ask if you were concerned about the decreases in satisfaction with um, the resident surveys from various institutions. I mean, they're only small, but do you have any, like, in the surveys, do you ask why, there's, why they're dissatisfied? Or is it seasonal? or? With respect to the cultural institutions, I think it's a function of the, 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 the programming that's happening at a particular time. So uh, with respect to Toy 2, we're doing a lot of work on the behind the scenes. Um, that has um, meant that we've temporarily diverted resources away from temporary exhibition program and, and public program. Um, that those resources will be redirected back. Um, 
I think there's a, there's, we're also in a very um, fluid space in terms of uh, um, both public perceptions and also the way that tourists engage with us. Um, so there will always be fluctuation. Um, I take satisfaction in the fact that whilst there may be a slight downtick at the moment, there's a very high um, taken nationally. Um, and, uh, but as I said, uh, certainly with respect to Tui Tu and with Lan Yuan, um, that, that is more about the, the, the focus this year on, on back of house, and I anticipate that re redirecting that focus will have a positive impact in due course. Uh, Councillor Elder. Thank you, Chair. Um, now, my question was just around um, place-based support, um, which seems to be working really well. And coming to the annual plan and um, public forum, there was an expression of, um, is there a process or a way for place-based to be able to be represented in a more formal way or anything like that? Their concerns, or a bit like community boards, or something like that. The staff would appear to be unclear of the question. You might want to rephrase it. Well, because community boards sort of have reports and, and, and meetings and um, actions from those, and whereas oh, pl place-based place um, groups don't have a process. how we can support as a city place-based community development in the long term. Mm. That is being undertaken by a member of the community development team um, who is discussing that internally and externally. Um, and we plan to bring that paper to council later this year. And it may be within that that we can we will provide some option you know some options in terms of ideas around how the council can support, but also potentially better recognise, I guess, which is, I think, what you're asking, mm. um, the thoughts and views of uh, place-based communities. Um, I know that our team takes the feedback that we get from them and, and actions as much as we're able, but in terms... And, and it is part of our role and needs to be, and that's something I will double-check with our team that we are also encouraging people to come to these meetings and other public mm. forums to make sure that they give voice to their own views as well. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. OK, thanks. Councillor Wiley. Uh, thank you. Um, question regarding um, visitors' numbers and um, around Toy to uh, Chinese Gardens in Olveston. Um, and I see TripAdvisor, the rankings of, and the ratings are quite high. So we're doing quite well with the tourism sector. I'm, I'm interested to know why we didn't attend, why these entities didn't attend trends. Um, I, th I think it was a, a, a function of um, the fact that it was... Uh, fair way away and the, the um, expense within the marketing budget wasn't deemed at institutional level to be to be a justifiable spent expenditure. Okay, so then I look at the ODT on the 15th of May, an article about the disappointment of um, from Enterprise Dunedin around a comment made that there was only five entities from Dunedin travelled and were part of the Dunedin booth, plus one travelled on their own. And I would have thought these entities would have been front and centre in supporting the Dunedin visitor strategy and Dunedin visitor economy. Um, I think there is scope for us to be um, working harder at making sure that um, um, the, the breadth of Dunedin um, DCC and Dunedin facilities are represented collectively more effectively and we can certainly um, put some work into that next year. Okay, perfect, thank you. Further questions? No? Someone would like to move the report be noted. Moved Councillor Newell, seconded Councillor Gary. Would you like to speak to it, Councillor Newell? No? Other speakers? Councillor Aldo. Well, it's just a privilege to be able to see that the art gallery 
won an award and was in, in, in an, for another award um, this year, and also the museum. So it demonstrates that the staff and the management are re working really, really hard and getting really good results. So a big congratulations to our, our uh, the, um, community facilities in those places. I'll put it all those in favour. Aye. Those against, that's agreed. Thank you. Item seven, items for consideration by the chair. Are there any issues people want to raise at this point? No. In that case, I'll declare the meeting closed and we'll be back momentarily with the two minutes, he says optimistically, for the Planning and Environment Committee. Thank you. Thank you.